section 9.1 modeling with differential equations so first to, before we do the modeling stuff we need to define what a differential equation is so we say a differential equation is an equation which includes a derivative term examples let's say y prime plus x equals 2 that's a differential equation dy dx equals xy squared that's a differential equation d squared y dx squared plus x equals y minus 1 that's a differential equation all these are examples of differential equations because they involve derivatives. It doesn't have to be always first derivative. It could be first and second and third. It could be just third or it could be just second. To work with differential equations, we first start by asking students to verify that a given solution, say y equals negative t cosine of t, minus t is a solution to this differential equation t dy dt equals y plus t square sine of t so here we have to look at the left hand side left hand side of the equation t dy dt let's see what we can get for this dy is the derivative of that function that is given and to do so we can find the derivative of the first one using product rule so derivative of t is 1 times cosine t and then t stays at the same derivative of cosine is negative sine minus derivative of that other t is 1 so that gives me negative if you distribute the t in t cosine t uh, plus t squared sine t minus t so that's the left hand side of the equation to get to the right hand side right hand side The right hand side is y plus t squared sine t. But what is y? y is negative t cosine of t minus t. And then keep the t squared sine t the same. Notice, do, do you think these match? Yes, they do. They match. So that proves to us that that given solution is a solution that that given differential equation another similar example verify that y equals c e to the x is a solution to the differential equation y double prime minus y equals to zero So we find y prime, which is c e to the x, and again y double prime, same thing, c is a constant, and we substitute y double prime c e to the x minus y, uh, y is c e to the x, and notice it gives us 0, which is the right hand side. Verify that. as another example y equals e to the x cube is a solution for the differential equation y double prime minus 3x square y prime minus 6x y equals to 0 
when you take a differential equation class, you will learn how to, if they give you the equation, how you find its solution. So we find uh, y w prime. So from y, we get y prime first, which is the drift of the top times itself, and then y w prime. y w prime, we use product rule. Drift of the first one times the second, plus the first one times the drift of the second. Derivative of e, e to the u, u prime e to the u. So to simplify this, keep the first term the same, 9x to the fourth e x cubed. Then substitute. So y w prime is this, I'm working with the left side minus 3x squared, y prime is 3x squared e x cubed, minus 6x, and y is e x cubed. And don't write equal zero, we expect this to be equal to zero, that's what we're expecting. So this stays the same, same, minus 9x to the fourth e x cubed, minus 6x e x cubed. And notice, how this cancels this and this cancels this what we get we get zero sometimes you can be asked to find the value or values of k for y equals cosine kt to satisfy the differential equation y double prime four y double prime equal negative twenty five y. So here we find from y equals cosine k t. Y prime would be negative k sine k t. K is the constant, and y double prime would be negative k squared cosine kt, if you find the derivative using chain rule. Then the left hand side becomes 4 times what I just got, 4k squared cosine kt, and the right hand side is negative 25 cosine kt. Then we're going to subtract or add 25 or Add 4k squared to both sides. We can factor cosine kt out. That will leave 4k squared minus 25. So in order for that to equal to 0, we set the 4k squared minus 25 equals 0. Factor 2k minus 5, 2k plus 5. So we get two values of k 5 over 2, negative 5 over 2. We can look at other examples, maybe a little bit more difficult. Let y equals a sine 5 halves t plus b cosine 5 halves t. Verify that the given y is a solution to the differential equation 4y double prime equals negative 25y. So let's go over this one. What I need to do is find y prime first. Keep a out as a constant. Drift of that one is 5 halves cosine 5 halves t. Plus keep b outside. Drift of that is 5 halves with a negative. So we put a negative down here. Sine 5 halves t. 
you do the same thing with y double prime negative a 25 over 4 sine 5 halves d minus b 25 over 4 cosine 5 halves t so the left hand side of the equation because you're trying to verify you can do that 4y double prime equals multiply everything by 4 in the final answer we just got negative 25a sine 5 halves t minus 25b cosine 5 halves t so that's the left hand side the right hand side you do negative 25 times so the right hand side negative 25 times the a sine 5 halves t plus b cosine 5 halves t what do we get here we get negative 25 a sine 5 halves t minus 25 b cosine 5 halves t and you can convert the left hand side with the right hand side and they should match Okay, notice what I did. <coughs> so, based on the previous example, we asked you to find the values of k, right? We got two values of k. One k was 5 halves, one was negative 5 halves, right? So then, what I did, I took the 5 halves, and I put it back in into the question here, you know, like that. And then I tried to run some, come up with a new question, which was this one. is how to solve a differential equation. And there's, there's a lot in solving differential equation. We're going to look at the very simple version of simple stuff. So if they ask us solve y prime equals x, y cube for y of 0 to equal to 2. So the only method we're going to use here is called separable, separable method. So how do we do separable? We rewrite y prime as dy dx in Leibniz notation. And we separate the x's and the y's. So how do I separate them? We can bring the y cube down where the y is and move the dx up where the x's are then we can write this as y to a negative 3 dy x dx why did we do that now it's ready to be integrated so when i integrate this i integrate the other side what do we get here that's y to the negative 2 over negative 2 this is x squared over 2, and then you can put the plus c there. You can put c, c over 2, whatever you like. And we don't like to see negative exponents, so bring that down. Keep this the same. Then we have y of 0 is 2. So when x is 0, y is 2. So plug that in. y of 0 is 2. So plug in x 0 and y 2. So we get c equals negative 1 over 8. Why did we do that? Because we need to plug it back in. We get 1 over 2y squared 
x squared over 2 minus 1 over 8. Now, people say, do I, do I have to simplify more? Do I have to get y by itself? You don't have to for now, so this would be fine. So what can be an application to a differential equation? We've seen in Calc 1 the, the dB dt, differential equation, equals Kp, where P is for, for population. Let's call it equation 1. Can I use it later on? So dB dt is Kp. And um, so this, the dB dt, gives us the rate of growth. And this equation has a solution. Anyone can solve it now using separable. P of t equals constant times e to the kt, which is, or which can be easily verified as a solution to equation 1. So if you find dB dt or P prime, you will get K times P. In this case here, we only work with C bigger than 0 and T bigger than or equal to 0. What do we call it when t is 0? So when the time is 0, if you substitute it in to find p of 0 is c e to the 0, which is c. That's the initial population. So what happens here? So what does it mean to say P of T is C E to the K T as a solution? What does it mean? So let me show you graphically what this means. We have the T versus population. Now, remember the solution that we got here, the highlighted one, Usually when you solve an equation, you get numbers, right? You get numbers that you can label on the number line. But here we're solving a differential equation. So when we solve the differential equation, we got another equation. That equation is an exponential. So this means if I take values for K and C, so every time you take a value for K and C, let's say K1, C1, you're going to get E to the T. E to the T, that's a solution right a solution and then if you take c2 k something get another solution every time you pick values for c you got different values for the or different equations for the solution but they all represent um, exponential functions so the graphs of these kind of equations which we will talk a little bit more about it today is we're gonna have let's say a, a line a horizontal line i'm gonna call it m so the graphs that we're going to have, they're going to go like this, or like this, like this. And if, if it's decreasing, it would come from the top down, like that. If P approaches M, like the population approaches M, so you're going up and it's approaching M, or coming from the top down, approaching M, that M is called... Um, Carrying capacity. And what is this for? So, first is we have the dBTT. We said it's Kp. If it's going to be about Kp if if P, the population, is, is small. And that's one thing. 
db dt is going to be negative if p is bigger than m. So if, if the population is higher than m, the db dt is going to be less than 0. Now, if I take these two together and I combine them, If we combine them, we get one equation, kp times 1 minus p over m. Let me call this equation 2. So these two equations could be combined into one equation. This equation is called the logistic equation, which is called... logistic equation or logistic differential equation and how we were able to basically um, how we were able to put these two together and get one equation one differential equation well this is what happens if to verify that if p is really smaller than m way smaller than m p is way smaller than m so then what happens to p over m so you have a small number and m is huge so this would go to zero so like a number over infinity goes to zero so in that case if you go back to equation two then db dt is going to go just kp times 1, which is kp. So that gives me the first first condition up there, first one, this one here. Now, how about the other one? If p bigger than m, what happens? Then, um, Then the quantity inside the, the parentheses, the 1 minus p over m, which you can easily do it, you, you divide by m, and multiply by negative, switch the sign, this will be less than 0. And so, we can say that db dt is negative. And as a note, what happens if P approaches M? P approaches M. P approaches M means P over M will always go to 1, like almost 1. So then inside the parentheses in the logistic differential equation, 1 minus P over M becomes 0. Right? So then the P over M is approaching 1. And so... 1, is, 1 minus p over m approaches 0. Then this tells us, in this case, that dp dt goes to 0. So, the last note here to keep in mind that P of T is 0 and P of T is M are called equilibrium solutions.
to the differential equation two that I listed above. So what can happen here in, in some cases is you can be asked to solve uh, a differential equation um, a logistic differential equation. So for example, let's say if we are given, let's say, dp dt equals remember that the logistic question looks like this kp so we're gonna we're gonna pick value um for k let's say 2p times 1 minus p over p over m if I want to keep it as M, or you can replace it with whatever you want. Now, if, how about if we keep the two as k? Can that work? Yes. We can also differentiate it, e uh, integrate it, even if, if k stays the same. So we can go over this now. How are we going to do this? So we're going to separate. There's no t's. So you're going to bring the p down, 1 minus p over m equals k dt and one thing that bothers there is the m so you can multiply the top and the bottom by m or if you like to combine the fractions in the denominator so you get m minus p over m multiply top and bottom by m Again, M is constant. And this is the fun part. We're going to integrate K constant, M constant. P and T are the variables. When we integrate both sides, you can pull the M out. DP, P times M minus P. Integral K DT. The, left, the right hand side is very easy. The thing is about the left-hand side. Which method should we use in the left-hand side? So for the right-hand side, so easy, straightforward. The left-hand side, that's where we use partial fraction decomposition. So we're going to do on the side here, we're going to try this on the side. 1 over P times M minus P equals A over P plus B over M minus P. When we multiply everything by the LCD, we're going to get A times M minus P plus P times P. And when we solve for capital A, capital B, we're going to choose values for P. P, maybe P equals 0. I would get M A, so A equals 1 over M. Uh, another value for P could be M. We got 1 equals MB, so same thing. So B equals 1 over M. Then all that, we have M times the integral of A over P, so 1 over M over P dP plus integral 1 over M 
m minus p dp equals k dt. So on the left side, I have m outside, bring the one over m out, dp over p, bring one over m down, dp over m minus p equals take the k out dt. Now if you multiply the m out, that will clean up all the m's. So the first one, I got an absolute value of that. The w next one, you have to do u sub in the denominator, u sub on this, u sub on m minus p. So you need a negative sign out. So that would be negative natural log of m minus p equals kt. And then you can put the plus c there. The idea here is to solve for p, the population. So how do you solve for population? We can combine this into one ln. E both sides. which can be written as e to the kt times e to the c. Then p over m minus p is plus or minus the e to the c times e to the kt, if you want to drop the absolute value. Then, for simplicity, all this is a constant. We can use any other constant. Even if you call it C again, it's fine. Cross multiply, you get MC e to the KT minus PC e to the KT. Bring the terms with P to one side and the others to the other side. Factor P out. and divide the whole idea behind this is to show you how we can how we can use integrals that we learned this course like partial fraction decomposition to solve differential equations like this